All right. Hello Keep and welcome an to everybody who, who finally got in. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm sorry for the confusion with the, the links. Okay. Can you see my um, PowerPoint on my screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay, perfect. All right. So um, not only am I going to show you how to go in and grab the um, template syllabus, how to copy and paste the information from the master syllabus and how to make sure it's accessible, how to save it as a PDF and how to load it into the course. Okay, hopefully we will get through it in 50 minutes and I will apologize if we go over the hour um, for those of you that had problems getting in, but I'm glad that I waited to get started till I knew everybody was here. Okay, so um, I will say that um, I have PowerPoints that have images and everything on it, but I actually want to show you. I actually want to do it in front of you um, as part of the recording, but the um, PowerPoint will be available with the recording. So if you wanted to go back through and, you know, looked at the screen captures and everything, but I do have the steps on where to go to find the templates, um, what you need to do to download it, how to change it and then how to copy and paste the information and so on. So it's all part of the PowerPoints, but at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move over to um, my Blackboard. Okay, and um, I know some of you were talking about, um, you weren't sure where to go into the N2OL course, so we actually went in and um, before we, uh, we were talking about this afternoon, we eliminated some stuff from the course menu. So the course menu doesn't have as many options in it. So at this point, your main area that you're gonna be working in is this section in here, okay? So hopefully that will stop any of the confusion that some of you were having, okay? Now, to get the um, templates for the syllabus, I have added them into the courses for observation and the template section of the course, okay? So you're gonna go into the N2OL course, you're gonna go to this screen here. All right, and oh, because I'm in a student, let me get out of there. Okay, so if we go into that screen, there's a section over on the right hand side here that shows you not only the um, course shell templates that you can download and upload in your courses that we talked about last week, um, but here are the syllabus um, templates right in here. And then there's some example syllabi, okay? So um, if you wanna look at one and how they've got it laid out, it's, some, we have some great examples in here, okay? So what you would wanna do is find the template that matches the mode of teaching that you're doing, okay? So we've got the face-to-face, -face, the online, hybrid, and blended, okay? So I'm gonna focus on online because that's what we're focusing more on right now. So I'm gonna click on the um, online template and that shows it as a PDF. So what you need to do is you need to come up to the top here and you need to download it, okay? So when you hit download, it should go to a folder and it's gonna to go to your um, uh, downloads folder. But if you're using Chrome, which is the, the um, suggested um, browser, it should automatically go to the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. So I should be able to click on that syllabus and it should automatically open it up in Microsoft Word, okay? Now to make any changes to this, I would want to um, enable editing. Okay, now because this is an online course um, syllabus, we've gone through and we put a lot of exa examples of you know, how it would be structured, how would you tell your students about the course, um, how the mode works, things like that. So we have sections in here where you're basically gonna be filling in the blanks basically, okay? Your contact information, any of your course materials, we already have the link that goes to the college bookstore if they need to order it there. Um, if you have any other suggestions of them ordering their textbooks, you know, add them, you know, give them links in here. Um, the course catalog information, we're gonna pull right from um, the master syllabi that we're gonna create today, okay? The student learning outcomes, again, that's just gonna be copied and pasted from the master. Um, if there's any prerequisites, again, and it tells you right there, they're part of the master. All right, 
And then this is where we're giving you the information already laid out, okay? So we tell the students what an online course is, okay? Letting them know that the course is available 24 seven, you are not available 24 seven. So sometimes they need to know that, okay? Um, one of the things that we do have here and it's highlighted is are you gonna have any synchronous components to this? Now, um, an online course cannot have required synchronous meeting times, okay? You can have office hours where they can come in and talk to you, but you can't tell them that they have to attend a specific you know, section. Unless in your syllabi, you've told them that they have to come maybe to campus or have a proctored exam, then they might have a scheduled time at the end of the semester. Um, I know a lot of the math ones have exams that they have to come to campus to take or they have to find somebody to proctor it. And that would be explained in this part of the syllabus, okay? And Donna, um, when they do that, they also make sure that not only they provide different times, dates and times so these students know up front because um, this could be the difference of them registering for your course or not. Okay. If they don't and, live local, if they're not around here, you know, you're telling them they you can't say you have to come here. You can say you can either come here to take that exam or here's a form you're going to fill out for what, how you're going to have it proctored. It could be required to be submitted up front, how that's going to happen. Uh, if that's something you're considering, please have a conversation with me prior to doing so. Um, but that is one example, but it is, you have to give people options. Sure. Right. And you also, we also do have something on our website that talks about this. And any SUNY institution, they could actually go and have a, well, there are lists of SUNY institutions that they can go to, to have their exam proctored. So it can be worked out if that's required for the, the program that you're doing. I know a lot of the nursing ones have that required as well. Okay, so that's very important to make sure that you edit that and say, you know, what is required of your course. Okay. Um, Online attendance, it talks about it. You know, they're not actually physically coming to campus. Um, and, you know, obviously read through this information, make any changes to it. But a lot of the wording is already set up. You just have to maybe tweak it a little bit. Okay. Um, we also have the link to the time management calculator to let our students know that for three credit hours for 15 weeks, they should actually be putting in 9.6 hours per week of work for your course, okay? And that's on the low end of it, all right? So they can go in and they can actually do this calculator depending on how many classes that they're taking online and figure out how many hours they should be putting towards their online courses, all right? So that's a nice option in there, it's already set up. Um, how they will earn their grade, okay? You probably have a table already in your syllabus that you could copy and paste into here. Um, laying out, you know, what percentages for each one of the categories that you're doing inside your course. Obviously, people have different types of assignments. Okay. Um, so we're going to talk about that. Um, we do discussions often in an online course, we have a rubric already in there. If you're not using this rubric, or you have your own rubric, you can copy and paste your rubric in. The one thing you got to be careful of this document is ADA compliant, but as soon as you copy and paste information from yours or the master syllabi, that content is probably not accessible. So that's why I wanted to make sure that I showed you how to go in and check for accessibility when we were doing this session today, okay? Because there's special things you have to do for tables, for images, for um, links, things like that, okay? Um, and then we have the scale in here. This is a standard scale. You wanna change this to put in what are the grades that they would get to get this particular letter grade. Obviously, if you're doing a points-based grade center, you would change this to points and you would put down how many points the students would have to achieve each one of these letter grades, okay? So, you know, some of the information's laid out, but you're gonna to have to update it. Um, expectations of the course, again, you might look at this and say, well, you know, you can tweak it, but at least it's there. So they have an idea of, you know, that they're responsible for um, the amount of time that they're putting in, what their expectations are, things like that. And you might want to tweak it a little bit. All right. And again, we're telling them we're not going to be um, accessible for 24 seven. Okay. 
Um, another thing we have in here is whether you accept late assignments. It's very important to make sure you include this in your syllabus, okay? Um, in this example, it's telling them there are no late assignments, okay? So you wanna make sure that you change that if you are allowing it, okay? Um, again, what I expect from them, writing skills, you know, are they being courteous to each other? We have a link in here for Natiket for um, participating in discussions. So again, you can look through this information, but this is kind of what we expect from an online student. So we're already giving you this information, okay? Then at the bottom, we also have all the information that is required by academic affairs, okay? So this is already part of the syllabi that we're giving you, okay? We also added a section in here about the library. Right now, the library is very unutilized and we're working very closely with them to try and get people to use the library resources a little bit more often. There's so many things that are available through the library. And if you wanna learn more about it, you can talk to Jean Lynn in the, um, the, the library right now. So, you know, we're trying to let the students know where they can get help, which is the biggest thing. And again, we've got the links in here. You don't have to create it, it's already there. And that's why we created these master syllabi so that a lot of the information that we put into our templates is already built into this. Plus we have information that's required by academic affairs as well. Okay, so that's the big thing. You can tweak this all you want. You can add your content whatever way you want to do it. And, you know, if you don't allow, you know, late assignments, put that in there. Let them know. Um, and you can see here we've, we've specified several times. Don't expect me to be available 24-7. Um, I've actually had students that emailed me at 10 o'clock at night and expected me to respond to them. Well, I'm not there, so I'm not available. So, um, a lot of information is in here, but the main thing that you're going to want to do is this top section here, okay? You can tweak the rest of it and make changes to it, but this is the information that is specific to your course, okay? So you would go in and, and fill your name in here, and I'm not going to fill it all in, okay? But what you want to do is you want to get the um, master syllabi that is on file at Academic Affairs for the courses that you're teaching. And if you um, haven't been able to get it, let me know, I do have access to them. Um, the one thing we gotta be careful of is your departments might have updated the syllabi, but they haven't filed it with Academic Affairs. So you might wanna check with your coordinator or your department head and make sure that you're using the most up-to-date information. And if what they have on file at Academic Affairs is not the most recent, then that needs to be sent to them, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring up a, um, a syllabus on, a, um, on one of my courses. So I'm gonna open this. Is it gonna open? It might already be open, let me check here. Okay, here we go. All right, so as I'm looking at this, I can see there's a lot of information about, you know, when it was approved and updated. Um, you wanna pay attention to that, your students don't need to know that. Um, you know, the amount, the credit hours, things like that. So a lot of that is part of the description as well. So what I would do is I would go in and I would grab this section here for my description and I'm gonna copy this. Now, I do have a problem with this. I'm gonna show you in a second. This is in a table. And most tables in, um, in Word are not ADA compliant. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste this in, okay? Now, when this pasted it in, it did not put it in a table format, which is exactly what I want to happen. I do not want this to come in as a table. So I won't have to set up the alt text and the headers and the borders and all that stuff to make it compliant. So this worked out really well, okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab my student learning outcomes from my master syllabi. And this one is definitely in a table here. So if I grab, all we really need are these here. Copy those over. Okay, so you can see it actually put it in a table 
And the bad thing about it is it actually put A in one cell, but it put B and C together in another cell. So that can cause a lot of problems. So what I would do is get rid of the table altogether. So if I select this table, there's a four prong arrow up in the corner and I go up to the layout tab, there's an option to convert to text. And all I wanna do is use the tabs that are in there and I'm just gonna actually, I'll do paragraphs and hit okay. And it automatically took the table out of it. And this way I won't have as many problems with this and I won't have to define the table when I go in and do the, um, uh, the accessibility checker on this, okay? Now it did go in and it set it up as ABC, maybe I want one, two, three. So I selected those and I can just go in and, and pick the numbering if I want to use that instead, okay? Um, so right now it hasn't given me any problems with copying and pasting it over, okay? So that was easy enough. Um, let me see here. I don't think there's any prerequisites for this one. So I would just go in and type it in, um, none. Okay, so as I'm going through, I'm just basically filling in the template with the information that I need, okay? Um, I might recommend to my students that they should have um, at least um, taken um, uh, CIS 105 and um, Excel experience for this one because it's a um, database course. So, so that would be my recommendation. Okay, but it can't be required because it's not on the master syllabi. All right, so I would finish going through and double checking everything. Um, the other thing I just noticed is I don't, you can tell that this text is different than what's up here. Okay, I would want to make sure it was the same. So I would select all this and make it Arial size 12 like the rest of it is, just so that some continuity. And again, I would take this and make it uh, size 12 as well. All right, for the course information, for the course materials, um, I would insert a, um, a picture of the textbook, if you had it, add the ISBN number. My course doesn't have a book to it, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna insert a picture because I assume a lot of you will have a book and you'll have a picture of the book. So let me just go in and I'll just grab any picture here that I can use. All right, so there's the picture of my book. I could go in and put my 12 digit ISBN number in here. It already has the college link. Like I said, if, if they can, you know, sometimes the books can be gotten through Amazon. Um, we don't publicize that to students because we do want them to buy it from the bookstore. If you require codes for something, make sure you put that in there because um, I have a textbook that I use for one of my courses that um, requires the book and the code. And if they don't get it through the bookstore, if they try to order it online to try and save money, um, I give them the website right for the, the publisher to order it through that. So I'm making sure that they're getting the code with the book. Okay, and not just buying the textbook cheap and, and having to worry about making sure they have the right information. So obviously I would change the course name at the top. Um, let me go in and do CIS 109. And this is a five week. Okay, so at this point, the, the syllabus is done. I'm gonna do a file, I'm gonna do a save as and I'm just gonna throw it in my downloads folder. Uh, I don't wanna throw it in there. Let's throw it on the desktop. And I wanna change the name. So I'm gonna do say CIS 109 syllabus. Okay, so obviously if you wanna save it using the correct course name. Okay, now, before I create the PDF for this, what I wanna do is run that accessibility che checker on it. Okay, so to do that, you would want to go to file up in the menu and there's an option of check for issues. Now, if you have an older version of a file, um, you, if you're using ours, you shouldn't have a problem with this. It should be the most up to date word version. Um, but you might have if you're trying to go to your and use your own one and then copy and paste our information into yours, you might have an old version like a 2010 um, version of Word, there will be an option to update 
your Word file. But if you don't see that update, you should see a check for issues. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and run the check accessibility. Okay, now I knew right off the bat that I would have a problem with the picture. So when I click on the picture, it's selecting the picture and it's letting me know down here that I don't have any alt text on that picture. So what I would want to do is right click on that picture and go to format. And in the format box on the side, I would go into this third one here and go into alt text. So what I would want to do is put in textbook image. And then put a description. I usually what I will do is copy and paste what I've put in for the the name of the book um, and the ISBN number and all that information. So I would usually put that into here. Okay. So as soon as I did that, you'll notice that underneath the accessibility checker, that picture is gone. Okay. So the next thing it has in here are links. Okay. Now, because we're using links that actually spell out the URL and not using text and then setting the text up as a link, it's, it's having a tough time with this. So I would want to right click on this and edit the hyperlink. And then what you want to do is a screen tip. So I would say library website. Telling them where they're going to go with this link. Okay, and you can see it automatically disappeared. Okay, so again, I'm going to do um, another edit hyperlink screen tip and put in um, home page. Library. Okay, so now if you put your mouse over it, you'll see that it says home page library. Okay, and same thing up here. What that does is if a student has a screen reader reading it, what it will do is it will list out whatever I have for the screen tip and then take them to that link. So this way, as they're reading through their link page, it's not going to have to type out HTTPS colon and read out that whole thing. Um, so it will actually kind of label it for them when it builds a, a Basically, it builds them a table of contents of all the links in their document. So at this point, it's telling me that I have gone in and I found all the accessibility issues. Okay, I will warn you that even if you got it 100% through Word, once you upload it into um, Blackboard, Ally actually has a better accessibility checker in it, and it might come up with more issues that you need to fix. Okay, so, you know, don't be surprised if you even get it 100% here and you still have to make some changes. Okay, so I'm going to close these two windows. I don't need them anymore. Okay, so everything said, I'm going to save it again. Okay, now, when I go to save it as the PDF, okay, and that's what I want to load into my course. And the reason why you want the PDF is because students um, don't have to load extra software on their devices to be able to read it, okay? It's printable, it's downloadable. It can also be used on their mobile devices. And we don't wanna put a barrier in there for our course content because if the first thing that they're trying to download, they can't open, you've already put a barrier in their way, okay? So it's very important to make sure that you give them a PDF version of any big files that you want them to download and print or any files that you require in your course. Okay, so to make this an accessible PDF, I wanna go into file again. And what I wanna do is I wanna do a save as. Now, I know some of you know that you can go to print and print a pre PDF. That does not create an accessible tagged PDF file. You have to do a save as, okay? And I'm just gonna throw it on the desktop. All right, now to make it accessible, when I switch this to change the type from a Word file to a PDF, an options button pops up. So if I go into options, a dialog box pops up and it's telling me that the document structure with tags accessibility is turned on, okay? So at this point, it's going to keep the tags, which are your headings, um, your screen tips for your URLs, your headings for your tables, everything that you've done 
to set it up to make it ADA compliant are going to come along with it when it converts it to a PDF file. Okay. You don't get this option if you do a save to print as a PDF. Okay. So it's very important to make sure you do that. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit save. And I forgot to do one thing. I'm going to go back to file. I, I know I've already, think I've already done it on this, but um, when I go back to file, the thing we want to check, if you use our syllabus, our master, it will already have a title in here underneath file and information. It has to have a title for it to be a 100% compliant PDF file. If you forget this and you've done everything else to make it perfect, when you upload it into Blackboard, Ally will pick it up and say it has no title on the file. So you have to come back in here, put a title on it, before you save it and then save it as a PDF, okay? So it's very important to make sure that you do that. All right, so I've got my PDF, I've got it saved. It does have a title on it, so I'm fine, so I don't have to create another one. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And I don't need the master anymore, so I'm gonna close up the master. Okay, so now I would go into my course. So I'm gonna go into my spring course. Let me in there. Okay, so here is my data processing CIS 109 course. So I'm going to go into there. All right. Now, everybody should have a link in the course menu for the course syllabus and schedule. Okay. What I'm going to show you will keep this link available. If you add a section to your own course information, you might have to create the link yourself. And I'll show it both ways so you know how to do it but I'm gonna use the one that's already there. So I'm gonna click on the course syllabus. And this already has a PDF uploaded. So what I need to do is I need to replace this PDF with the one I just created. So what I would do is go up, I'm gonna make sure my edit mode is on and something has changed in Blackboard. It seems like every time I go into a course, I have to turn that edit mode on now. They've, they've changed a setting. So I'm gonna say, yes, I need it on. Okay, by doing that, I now have a drop arrow next to course syllabus at the top. So I'm going to hit that drop arrow and I want to edit it. Okay, now one of the things right now it's using the PDF file that I've already uploaded as part of my master. So I'm replacing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a different file and I'm going to tell it to browse my computer to find the file. And I threw that file on the desktop. So wherever you put it, that's where you want to go back to. I can see the Word file and the PDF file that I created. And the PDF file is the one I want to use. So I'm going to click on the PDF file and hit open. Now, when I did this, I don't know if you noticed, the name disappeared. I've got to put the title back in again. So I'm saying it's a course syllabus. Okay. And you can name it whatever you want. Now, as I scroll down through, if you're using our template, the track number of views is already turned to on. It's set to yes. For every piece of information that you create in Blackboard, you want to turn this track number of views on. Okay, very important. If you don't turn this on, it will not record if a student clicked on it. Okay, so it's very important. That's how it's keeping track of students' clicks inside the course. So I have it on for everything. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to submit this. Okay, so now if I go back to that link for that syllabus, it should show the syllabus that I just uploaded in there. And you can see the updated one. Okay, I can see I might want to go back in and clean up some of this, but right now it's in there and it's laid out. So it's important if you're going to use the link in the course menu, you want to make sure that you replace the one that's already there as part of the template. Now, let's say that you've rolled a course over and you already have your course information area and you don't have that link to that course syllabus. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go into um, a practice course so I can show you how to add the link if you don't have it. 
This would be more for people who have already been teaching online and hybrid and they're rolling their content over and maybe not starting from scratch with our templates. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna go into a practice course shell. Okay, so in this one I have course information but you can see I don't have a syllabus link. So I'm gonna go into my course information and I have a schedule, but you know, this is a kind of a junk course, but I don't have the syllabus in here. So I would wanna add the syllabus. So I'm gonna to go to turn my edit mode on. I'm gonna to go to build content and I'm gonna upload my PDF file. So this is adding it brand new. So I'm gonna do file and I'm gonna call it course syllabus again, just like I did before. I'm gonna browse my computer for that file I just saved. Here it is. And because this is brand new, the track number of views is not on. So I wanna turn that on and then hit submit. Okay, so now at this point, the syllabus is in here, but there is no link in the course menu. So what I wanna do is I would go to the plus sign. Again, my edit mode must be on to have this. I would go to the plus sign and what I wanna add is a course link. A course link will create a link to an object already inside your course. So I'm gonna do a course link and I'm gonna browse, okay? And I would find my syllabus that I just uploaded in the course and I would select it and it automatically names it that. I can put in something different if I wanted to, if I wanted to do CIS 109. A lot of my students are taking multiple of my courses. I have um, six different CIS courses, so it might help them to see which course they're looking in at the time. And I would make it available to users and submit it. Automatically goes to the bottom of the menu. I'm gonna grab it, move it up, and now when students click on that link to the syllabus, it automatically shows the PDF file, okay? So they should be able to see it on their phone, their laptop, oh. their tablet, whatever they're using. And they do have the option to download it so they can put it onto their device as well, okay? So that's another advantage of the PDF. They can download it, they can print it. If you just do a page with the syllabus in it, Blackboard doesn't have the option to print a page. So that's why you're better off supplying a file with especially um, a syllabus that is the most important information in the course next to your schedule to get them started in your course, okay? So by getting, giving them the PDF, giving them a link in the course menu, you're already giving them that quick access to that information immediately when they get in the course and they aren't searching for it. And that's what we're trying to do with these templates to make it as easy as possible for these students that when they go from one course to the next, hopefully that course menu will look very familiar. And, and that's one of our biggest things right now. Um, a lot of the students didn't know where to even find the syllabus so that they were having problems with it, okay? So at this point, I've gone through, I showed you how to download the template, how to add and copy and paste the content from the master syllabus into it, how to go in and run the accessibility checker and fix some of the mistakes, and then how to upload it into Blackboard so that students can access it and have it in the course menu, okay? So at this point, I'm gonna bring that PowerPoint back up. All right, and like I said, I have all the instructions that I showed you, okay? The only thing I've gotta add is how to add it to the course menu if it's not there. Okay. Now, one of the things that came up today in some of the emails that we received was um, the accessibility. And um, on the end of this PowerPoint, and we're constantly referring to our, um, our NCCC Online um, Teaching Academy Faculty Support Center, it's mouthful. We have um, many, many resources for, for you to get you started. And on our accessibility page, um, we're gonna give you the link for this. Let me go ahead and move it over here. On our accessibility page on our blog, okay, 
I've gone in and we did a whole set of sessions over the, um, the month of October on how to make um, ADA compliant documents, videos, audio files, the PDFs, how to make a PowerPoint accessible, um, how to make content and Blackboard accessible, um, and how to make the Word documents accessible, okay? And you can see here that I've added the time frame for each one of the videos, so that way you know how long it's gonna take you to go through the videos. So if you wanted to learn a little bit more on how to make um, Word files ADA compliant, there's a 32 minute video to watch for that, okay? I only touched on a couple of things when I was um, running through, you know, creating that um, PDF file of the syllabus today. There's a lot more to it, okay? All right, so now at this point, does anybody have any questions? And I am going to hold something. I'm going to stay on for a while. So if anybody has any questions about other things, um, I'm happy to stay on. But if you have something, you know, a question about this. Hey, Donna, I just was watching the chat a little bit. Maria uh, had a question about tracking, but I said you could, she could stay on since we didn't want it in the recording here. Okay. We're going to be covering it in the manage learning module in this training series. But if she wanted to know now. Okay, yeah, sure. But, um, Caitlin wanted to know about, uh, cannot can you copy and paste, but then you answer, we're answering her question. So that was it from the chat. Okay, great. All right, anybody else want to chime in and ask a question? Please unmute, unmute yourself and... Yeah, the, the big thing we were trying to do is make it as easy as possible for you to take your current syllabus and copy and paste the pieces out of it that you already have um, and, and use the content that we've already created for you. Donna, I'm sorry. I, I couldn't figure out how to see you again uh, or to um, unmute. My, I, I, I found you. My, okay. question, my question was about the um, tracking. I don't usually put that on, but I'm assuming if I did, then that little, I forget what you call it, little upside down V, if you click on that, then it would tell me how to see the tracking results. Is that right? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, there's reports that you can run. The big thing is that if you don't have the tracking turned on for each piece of information in your course, Right. Blackboard doesn't know enough to keep track of those clicks. So um, I, like I said, I have it on every single piece. I don't care what it is. I, so you know, even, if I, yeah, I'm, if I'm sorry, if I, so then if I was in the grade book and I, and I ran a report, which I don't usually do, but if I did that, it would show me the tracking results for what they actually looked at. Not through, um, not through the grade center. Okay. There is a um, underneath evaluation, there's course reports. I see. Okay. And I can tell you which reports are the best ones to run and use. And, and it individualizes per student or no? Um, it, it depends on what you're trying to do. Some reports will let you drill down to one student. Other reports will um, grab everybody's activity. Okay. So it, it depends on what re report you want to run. Okay. But unless you've turned that tracking on, it's not going to help. You, you're it. not going to get the report that you need. Okay, thank you. I found it's a great way to keep the students honest because I had a student claiming she was doing all this work and through the tracking information, I was able to hold her accountable and said you really weren't. She was quite shocked. Then she started crying and gave me the real story. <laughs> that's what so. that's why I'm interested because I have somebody who's done nothing and he's at this point trying to say that he'll finish, he'll catch up this weekend. And I would like to be able to say, but you haven't done anything, not one thing. <laughs> and not only has he not turned anything in, but I'd like to see if he's even looked at anything yet. Okay, so. I'm gonna stop the recording here because it seems yeah. like we're kind of getting off on topic, but I'm fine with answering the questions, but I'm gonna go ahead and stop now. All right.